Well, hello, everybody. It's wonderful to have you with us. I pray wherever you are that you know that God is with you exactly in the place where you are. Well, we are in this series called Living in Victory. And the reason I was very keen on this series is that the Christian life is actually meant to make a difference to our life. It's not meant to be something that we just believe in, but we're meant to be able to see the outworking of what has occurred. And that's really one of the reasons I love this series, because as a Christian, as someone who has been experienced what Jesus has done for us, my life, our life, is called to be different. Well, in the scriptures, there's a feature that we often hear about, and it's called the attitude of gratitude, that expressing gratitude. And Jesus, in a sense, looks for this because gratitude is an expression of something that has happened within us. I want to go to Luke's Gospel, chapter 17, and we're going to read from verse 11. This is a passage many of you would know. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet, thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. And then Jesus asked, were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? He, then he said to him, get up, go on your way, your faith has made you well. And I love this passage of Scripture because there's so many things happening in this passage of Scripture. And we can read it just purely at the level I remember being in, in, in grade school, primary school, and, and reading this passage of Scripture. And, and the whole idea was make sure you're grateful. Make sure you're grateful and make sure you say thank you. And we certainly can get that from it. It's very true. But it's far richer than that. Here's Jesus, and he enters into Samaria. Now, the Jewish people and the Samarians, they were at odds with each other. They didn't actually like each other. And, uh, but yet there were similarities between them because their regions were not that far apart. And Jesus is traveling to Jerusalem, and he goes through Samaria. And he, and he enters the village, and, and it says, As he entered the village, ten lepers approached him. Right? Now, leprosy in those days was seen as some form of skin disease. And because often it was associated with being contagious, someone who was deemed to have some form of skin disease, whether it be leprosy in the full sense of leprosy or something else, were often banished and put outside and the village. And uh, so Jesus is approaching and they call out to him, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. What's mercy? Mercy is, is, as one priest I read talking about it in the Divine Mercy, he talked about pre, uh, uh, mercy is forgiving the unforgivable uh, and showing kindness to those who are completely undeserving. And so here the, the, these ten lepers call out, uh, Jesus, um, uh, have mercy on us. And, then, and when he saw them, he said to them, Go and show your pre- yourself to the priests. So immediately Jesus' response is, go do what you know the, the, the rules, the law says that you're meant to do. When you are healed, you go show yourselves to the priests. Now, nowhere does it say here that Jesus says, be healed. Nowhere does it say that when they call to Jesus to have mercy, that they were instantly healed. But Jesus says, go. And there's a very important scripture that we, a principle that we see in the scriptures very often, is sometimes we have to walk in the direction of our faith. We have to walk in the direction of what God is asking us before we see the miracle in our life. That sometimes the changes that we need to make in our life, we have to make those changes before they become, in a sense, uh, rooted within us. We have to act what sometimes we're not just yet. Uh, and, and, and so we're walking in faith, not walking in reality. 
You want to make some changes in your life? The resurrection has come and there's some changes you need to make. Sometimes we've got to walk in the direction of those changes before we see the change. And so they say to Jesus, have mercy. He says, well, go show yourself to the priest. That's his response. He doesn't say, be healed. We don't find that. He said, start walking in the direction of your healing. Start walking in the direction of your change. Um, uh, and so, and as they went, they were made clean. It says, as they went. You know, highlight that. As they went. So often the healing, the transformation, the change in us happens as we're walking in the direction of what we believe God is doing for us. And in my life, I've discovered that I've often got to walk in the direction of what God wants before I have it. I have it. When, when uh, television began for us many years ago, I felt like the Lord said to me, this is what I want you to do. And others said it was kind of discerned among a group of people. And, but yet we didn't have any of the, the money to do it. We didn't have the resources to do it. We didn't have anything to do it. But because we felt that that was what God was saying, is we needed to start walking in that direction. And we started to set up before we even, we even had the full reality of it. And then, and then he goes on, and, it, and then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back praising God with a loud voice. We don't know whether he'd even got to the priest, but as he's going, he noticed, wow, I've changed. And he goes back and he, give, and he gives Jesus thanks. He said to say thank you to him. Um, he prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. He prostrated his feet, himself at Jesus' feet. In other words, he took up a posture of worship. And it says, and he wasn't a Samaritan. He was one of these people who didn't get on with the Jews. And yet he recognized who Jesus was. Now, scholars tell us that the nine who turned away were indicative of the people of Israel, though ultimately would reject Jesus. And yet, once again, it was the stranger it was the person who was outside, it was the weak, it was the rejected who saw Jesus. And that's why very often we have to be very careful who we judge and pass judgment on. Because sometimes the people who aren't in church, maybe one day will get a far better seat in heaven than those of us who are. Maybe there's a different way of seeing because here is the one who's on the outside who becomes in. And the people who are on the inside become out. It's fascinating, isn't it? The scholars tell us this. Is, is what do you need to do to walk in the direction of how Jesus calls you to reach? There's so much more we could say. Fabulous passage of scripture. Loving Father, we give you thanks and we give you praise. I pray today, Lord God, that as we go through our prayer today and as we think today and as we walk in our life today, Lord God, that we could walk in the direction of what you're declaring to us that we would be grateful to you, that we would see you for who you are. Lord God, allow us to experience and encounter you today. And Father, we make this prayer in the name of Jesus through the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all, everybody. See you tomorrow. And don't forget, wherever you are, God is never far from you.